Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. We're playing, uh... Ace Attorney. We're, 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 we're continuing the fifth chapter of Ace Attorney. So, yeah. We're finally on day two. Which, considering we've been playing this chapter for, like, four streams now, it's kind of pathetic. But... Hey. To be fair. The first one was a mistake, a bad bad idea. Um The second one was After another stream, another game, and then the third one, I was really, really tired. And I'm currently struggling to get my monster open, that's why I'm stalling for time right now. So. Yeah. I think there was another one in there, but I don't remember. Which probably goes to show just how scuffed this has been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they weren't long. I'm hoping for a long one today. I'm hoping I don't crash. I'm like... I don't fucking know. I'm hoping I don't crash. So. Um... You know when you drink something consistently that kind of has like a weird taste like the first time you drink it and then as you drink it more that kind of weird taste you became so used to it and so it didn't have it anymore um you know the battery acid part of monster it's been so long since i've like actually drank in a monster that it's back <laughs> not in full swing because i did have one last week but like this is like my third monster of the month so, I do. I don't know how I feel about, like, original monster flavor not used to it. It's definitely a taste. But, like, the watermelon one, if you don't drink the watermelon one for a really long time, it's, like, so battery acid and so good and I fucking love it. I want to get a watermelon one at some point, more recently. More. I want. I want to get another one, cause I haven't. I haven't drinking watermelon in fucking like months. So. <laughs> uh. Oh right, we were in the middle of one of these things. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, let's go to the beginning of the statement so that I can at least fucking okay. Somehow I always knew I did like this would come. I was on my way to the silver lunch with my boyfriend. Elaborate. Hello, Mari. Welcome to the stream. Also, let me know if audio is fine. Like, if the background is overpowering me or is a bit too loud for your liking and you want it to be more. Groundy. Let me know, let me know. Rubber gloves. Oh fuck, I should be fucking voice acting. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only con possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Uh, impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss... Miss Star. This is bad. He's got them thinking this was all planned. She can prove this claim. The trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh room, is the right? We can make it. We already. Yeah. Alright, for me. 
It's a little bit too loud for me to think. <laughs> oh. Prove it wasn't premeditated. How do I prove it wasn't premeditated? Literally it. I'm gonna press everything so that I can get some more contacts to detail, whatever. How did you know? I respected I respect the prosecutors prosecutors basic abhorrence of crime. But their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. <laughs> Given that they are used to erasing and giving in evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something against personal against prosecutors? I found that I had my found my dream job when I I felt that I had found my dream job when I had become an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired? And to me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That being said, I am a pro, you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. This boyfriend. He's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. Uh, I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before applying. The security guard room is in the lot, A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? I'm a visitor now. I parked in the B lot. So she was in the B block when she witnessed the crime. So then, if. If security office. Why no security guard see crime? Why security guard no see crime? Security guard should have seen crime. Oh, that's not, what I, that's not the button I wanted to press. It's fine. You sense some- I know I already went through this, so I'm going to, uh, just read it to myself so it goes by a little faster and I can think.
Hmm. Okay. for streaming going off. I should really delete that alarm. I don't forget to stream. Like, ever. I heard that because I'd forget. But... I don't forget, like, ever anymore. Pew, 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 pew. I think so too. Maybe I do parking lot plans next to this one. Yeah, no. Oh. That hurted. It says lot A on it. Or do you mean this one? I mean like this one i like the thing is i already did a thing that was like i had these all and then i did a thing that got me this one so i think i have to do something with this one but i don't know what It, it was through the- it was through the- the chain link. So like... This here, you can see that. This here is a chain link fence. And in this photo, you can see the chain link going across. Oh, you think, uh, the glove statement with the knife. I'll try that. Oh! I mean, that is what happens generally with looking at things, is if something's super close to your, your eyes, your brain will automatically kind of, like, filter it out from your view if you're not focusing on it. Um, because you can always constantly, most people can always constantly see their nose or their glasses. But their brains kind of just filter it out. But yeah, the music stops. That means you were right, Nick. Good job. Take it a sip. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. Oh, it's because that's Edgeworth's knife. If the 
thing was premeditated, she would have brought a knife. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? Oh, fuck. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, our prosecutor's bad people. <laughs> Why is there a child here? Why is there a- Why is there a ch child here? Mommy, our prosecutor's bad people. Fucking gives me the vibes of like... The one odds one is out audio. Like, mommy, why is sister screaming? You don't get to talk after you're stealing my last railroad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maya is like 17. 16 or 17. While she's a child, she's not like clinging to the, her mother. Granted, she can't really cling to her mother. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean, though. <laughs> she is above the age of thirteen. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot her mother left. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, I just, I totally forgot, I totally forgot, I- <laughs> Sorry, Maya. Uh... Uh... <clears throat> anyway, the defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. And what's that, Ricky? That was not her voice. Oh well. In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also pre prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh. Ah, yeah, no, the knife. Oh, the, the, I would have picked up on that one e pretty quickly. But yeah. Order, order, order. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. That was my Edgeworth voice. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not a such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole- a hole in the whole- No, I read that right. This shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The dependent, Lana Sky, murdered the detective with a knife. That's the only thing the prosecution needs to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. You suppose you think you're so clever now. But you know as well as I do if she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, then why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw and not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. Oh boy. What she have to say for us now? Lana Scott intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way here, all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure that he, Chief Prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in and again and again. 
That's incorrect. I read the autopsy report. It was not a very extensive autopsy report. But it did say... One singular stab wound. But I do have to read the, listen to the whole testimony before I can do that. I just wanted to say that... Before I forget. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. No, because I don't know what you two are referencing, but the only thing I can think of is the fucking llamas in hats. And I stabbed him 37 times in the back. Carl, that kills people. Ah, uh, I never watched anyone play it. I heard it was a good game, though. Carl. That reminds me of when, when Bip and I went camping. And we were just shouting that in the middle of the woods. At, like, midnight. Just, Carl, that kills people. And then we realized how that sounds to just a neighboring camper. And we're like, let's maybe not shout llamas and hats. <laughs> anyway. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. Do you ever just, yeah, like, do you ever just be quoting shit and then being like, wait, that sounds really bad when you don't know the reference? <laughs> uh. Mm -hmm. I've done that a ton. Like, of, of different things. I don't know what, though. I quote a fuck ton of shit. Honestly, the only ones that have really gotten me almost in trouble is me quoting stuff from, like, Markiplier that are slight innuendos or have curse words, but in front of my parents. Like, the amount of times I've almost said, you do you, I'll do me, and we won't do each other. Probably. In front of my parents. It has been a lot. I've had to stop myself multiple times when I was younger. <laughs> you close? <laughs> you close? I fucking love every single one of those you close. They're really funny. God, I gotta binge the Markiplier Mix series again. Great series. Anyway, I'm gonna continue. You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moth surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Huh? What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report says that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, uh, uh -huh, you're right. Good job, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? I'm the one who brought this up! He did it, uh, he did the you close joke in both Markiplier Makes and Unis Honest. But seeing as I can't really binge watch Unis Honest, I believe, I believe it originated in Markiplier Makes. It was like the pie episode, I think. No, it was the donut one. Not the donut, fuck. The pretzel one. It was the pretzel one. Where he was slapping the dough against the counter, I believe. Yeah. But, like, that doesn't hold true to the true Uno's honest nature. You know? I'll binge watch, like, compilations and shit. But, like, I'll probably never actually go to one of the repost channels and watch, like, the actual episodes because like Unis Honest the whole point of it was it to be gone.
Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize such mistakes are possible. No, they're not. Have you ever seen blood in your life? Blood looks nothing like ketchup. Like, even highly, like, oxidated blood is not that bright. It does not. One, blood dries brown. Two, if you have a very thin layer of blood, it's not gonna be, like, uh, matte. It's gonna be kind of like transparency. What ketchup are you using? Granted, I don't eat ketchup like ever. I don't really like it, but like, huh? Opaque, opaque is the color, the word I was looking for. Matte is the texture. Ketchup is opaque. Blood generally is not. It's not see-through either, but it's not opaque like ketchup. With what? What are you making ketchup with? And if you say blood, I'm going to make my own ketchup out of your blood. Opaque is not clear. Oh, opaque is not clear. Opaque is the opposite of clear. I think? Now you're making me question myself. Uh, oh. Oh. If I can spell it. Opaque! There it is. Yeah, not able to be seen through. No, you're fine. You're not- you're not dumb. It's alright. Opaque's a- uh, opaque's a, a kind of a weird word. Um. But I- I know it because opacity is a word that you have to use in art a lot. And so I know that opaque is zero opacity. Itchy nose. Itchy nose. Okay. <laughs> Making sure nothing's dying right now. But now I realize such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from the victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Oh my god. For an ex-detective? She's terrible at testimonies. Like, oh my god. I'm starting to think- I'm- yeah, I'm like- I'm starting to realize why they fucking fired her. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Challenging her abilities as a detective has really set her off. A short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. Well, yeah. But, like, I expect the average person to be bad at testifying. But this is an ex-detective we're talking about. 
shit like this was literally her job. Like... Do, do, do. This is probably the one. But what do I have to do with it? Yeah. I mean, though, it does make sense for the average person. Um, because when you witness something, um, and your brain takes in all the information, you might miss a little bits and pieces, and so your mind fills in the blanks. And then if you look back on those memories and you have a little discrepancy, you remember it all as if you, like, saw it. And so you see two discrepancies, but one of them was what, so you, what you saw, and the other one was what your brain filled in. But you don't know which was which, and so you pick one, and that causes a discrepancy throughout your whole testimony. Or you don't notice the details because you're not trained to, and so, and so you, um, you overlook those details and then try to make them up later as you go. Or you remember things last second or you're like, oh, I didn't even think that might have been important. And so, yeah. And so that's why in real life as well, witness testimonies are shit. They're garbage. They're, they're, they're essentially worthless, especially if the crime took place more than a couple days ago. If it took place recently, then it's still pretty fresh, right? But if like a week has gone by since the incident, your brain has had so much time to fill in gaps and to change details that if you're the only witness, your word is worth nothing. Like, yeah, it'll get some people in the fucking jury to like be on what your side of what you saw but it's not worth anything <laughs> it like like i mean yeah if there's like four of you and none of you talked to each other and you all are saying the same thing then the witness testimonies are more worth something but when it's only one witness witness testimonies are shit but yeah <laughs> No, Nick, why'd you eat a rock? Uh, a red muffler. A ghastly the whole scene look. The scene was not ghastly. It was fucking like. Whatever. After the crime is committed. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. Clearly. Thank you, Edgeworth. Oh, what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or a muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. That's not what I was going for because I'll be honest, I don't really know what I'm up. But um She said the scene was ghastly. There was not any semblance of blood anywhere in the photo from after the crime. So except on her jacket. That's it. That is it. And you've proved it yourself. With this photograph. Yeah, like, this here is the only blood. Like, if you're like, Oh, it was ghastly. It was it was horrendous. You would have, like, some blood more elsewhere. Yeah, she also just doesn't have a muffler. I don't know what a muffler is, to be fair. But. Because I've never, like, heard of anything being referred to as a muffler, other than... Like a, a gun muffler? <laughs> no. Oh, it's a teeny scarf. 
Like, your ascot? Like, is it between ascot and scarf? Like, on the spectrum of, like, things you wear around your neck? It's like, ascot on the very left, and scarf on the very right, and then just mufflers in the center? Okay, that makes sense. Okay. I've just never, like, <laughs> heard of, like, a piece of clothing referred to as a muffler before. Interesting. And you proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, but that, uh, that can't be! Only a professional lunch lady can be so utterly clueless. Congratulations, perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. I love Edgeworth. Edgeworth is so funny. Oh my god, he's fucking... He's... Fucking great. Did I do my kitchen feelings? I did. Okay. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? Uh, but uh, it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given an entertaining interlude, but back to business. Yeah, no, because like I picked up my phone to move it out of the way because I was putting my hand on my desk. And then I saw my Hoyle Lab notification. And then my brain was like, Genshin. Did I do Genshin? Because I did it way earlier. <laughs> So yeah, I had I had to think about that for a second. Because I wasn't sure if I did my daylays. Even though I almost missed one of my classes <laughs> because I was on Genshin. <laughs> I fucking, I was on Genshin. And then I fucking looked over at the time I'm like, shit! My class starts in two minutes! <laughs> And then my internet decided to be slow. It was one of my online ones. <laughs> and then my internet decided to be slow, and I was like, shit! Hurry up! Hurry up! I got in, like, three minutes late. I'm just like me? Yeah. I know. I am me. Listen, I could, I could never, I need to set an alarm for my fucking, I'm gonna do that now. Now that, like, I think about it, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a little alarm for, uh, <laughs> for my virtual class. This doesn't happen again. Uh, see, no, because the thing is, when I got on Genshin, it was, like, 3.30. Okay, uh, let's do a five forty five fifty five fifty. That's a good time. My alarm is being named class, dumbass. That's fair. That is entirely fair. I wasn't even thinking about it, to be honest. Kind of forgot I had class. It will. But I am definitely that way. Like, if it's before I need to leave somewhere. You know how I be. I'd be like that. Listen, 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 listen. My class ends. My last in-person class of the day ends at 1.30. When I'm leaving, I am not thinking about my 6 o'clock virtual class. That is the last thing on my mind. <laughs> so. 
The last thing. Because I don't have to go anywhere for it. I'm at my computer anyway. Like, if I had to get up and go somewhere, then I'd, it'd make sense more. But, like... Yeah. No, I've 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 kind of gotten used to it not like immediately being like ready for my class. Like my first class of the day, I'm there like 20 minutes early. And so by the time I actually get into the building and up on the third floor where we are, um it's like 15 minutes. But all my other classes, one of the classes I have, actually a lot of the classes I have are in a room that is very much being used until like three minutes before my class. So I literally have to sit outside and wait. Like I can't immediately go into my classroom and just sit there and be ready. I have to wait outside. And so I've gotten used to entertaining myself in like the 30 minutes between my class ending and when I can actually go in the room. Um, and so, yeah. And then that has transferred over to... I have an hour before I leave. Let me do this. Type thing. Uh, so yeah. I'm still very much like. If I have this thing at this time. I can't do anything. Like if it's say I have to leave for an appointment or something. I will not leave my house. <laughs> type thing. You know. My brain will usually let me. Play games. Genshin, my brain is usually pretty good a lot, a lot about letting me play. That's fair. I just totally forgot I had class. I forgot it was Wednesday. Ranger, do you really have to be licking your ass towards me? Apparently you do. Right, we're playing a game. What? Very well. Witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. <laughs> Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? Part where your sister stabbed the victim? This is not so many, but just might be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a par par partition off to her side. I quickly caught her and explained her rights to her and arrested her on the spot. Ah, uh, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to, es made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, Cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with the details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. Snakes are not poisonous, they are venomous. There is no such thing as a poisonous snake bite. It's venomous. It's venomous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. If you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. What? Cut clear and simple.
But, like, the point is, like, if it attacks you, it's venomous, right? If you're attacking it, and via, um... No, it is venomous. <laughs> no, that... You are right about that part. That one is poisonous because it is going... <sighs> you are not... No. No. You can't equate a snake to an inanimate object. I mean, if you use venom on the blade as a poison, then I would call that dagger fucking venomous. But... Da dagger using weapons is, is a whole other fucking boat we're talking about living things living things a dagger is not a living thing okay a dagger is not a living thing a snake is fuck the dagger fuck the fucking sword i do not care for the knife <laughs> If it bites you, and you die, it's venomous. You bite it, and you die. Yes! If it bites you, and you die, it's venomous. Dunkers don't bite you! They stab you! That is entirely... <laughs> <laughs> aren't alive they are inanimate objects <laughs> wielded by people <laughs> it's a person attacking you <laughs> note to the key word bite bite I T But like and this this elaborate example is not even what we're talking about. We're talking about snake bites. There are no poisonous snake bites. Snake bites are not poisonous, they are venomous. It would not. It w it would not. <laughs> it's not all right. It's not how it works. It's still venomous. It's not all right. We're fucking.
Also, no, we're not, we're not, we're not tabling this argument for later. From the National Park Service, poison is a toxin that gets into the body by inhaling, swallowing, or absorption through the skin. Venomous is when the toxin is injected into you. Funny how that works. Funny how that when something bites you, it's injecting the venom into you. It's not a living thing. <laughs> And it's not getting injected into you. It's not getting injected into you. <laughs> Please. It would be. It would be. It would be. Venom is injected through bites, stings, and the like by snakes, spiders, stingrays, etc. Poison is absorbed, consumed, or inhaled via amphibians, plants, fungi. It's, it's very clearly laid out. Venomous is applied to organisms that bite or sting to inject they're toxins. Organisms. Are you are organisms. Organisms. Is your knife an organism? If the knife is alive, then it's venomous. If the knife is not, then it doesn't apply. <laughs> that's not that's organic <laughs> it's not where did i say orgasmic i said organic you know like made of carbon the fuck did you get orgasmic from <laughs> A knife is not an organism. Please. I'm fucking crying. I'm fucking crying. I'm fucking crying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go back to the game. Oh my god. Point of the game. <clears throat> <laughs> The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside and kicked over an old oil drum. A an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright. You're if your cross-examination, if you will. <laughs> Listen, that conversation is killing me, man. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition. Okay, I, yeah, I did this. Okay. We caught her and rested her on the spot. Mentioned the muffler. That was what pleased me. Just won't admit that you're wrong. Uh, this guy tried to run. I'm sorry, my sister's so suspicious, Mr. Wright. 
Not as sorry as I am. But you didn't do it. You have to believe me. All right. Yeah, I noticed that. When she first popped up. Dude, let me press. So, where is this partition on the floor plant? Oh, I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? You say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details? Press her. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch land car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. To witness the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. That's- you can't just go over that. Like... Oh, it doesn't have a photo of it, because I'm- fuck. But like, that's not just something you can come over. <laughs> Amazing, the coffee queen lunch lady athlete, indeed. But I've taken her a little bit of time to come over the fence. But she couldn't have gotten my sister that fast. Yeah, like, look at that thing. You don't just willy-nilly climb over that. So how does Miss Sky not get away? I mean, yeah, like... <laughs> I mean, it's possible to climb over. That's 100% true. It's very possible. But, like... It's not something- it's not like hopping a fucking three-foot, four-foot fence, you know? Hell, even a five-foot fence. Muffler. No muffler. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? I remember exactly. I would have told you my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard- uh, uh, was the word muffler. Just that one word? So... What you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean... The cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. N no, the court does not see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should be- of, you should of course add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. I saw it all, how she tried to use the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. She prosecuted made tried, made to escape against Angel Star resistance is futile. <laughs> That's all I want.
Press again. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing. I only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, then we were going to see this visual. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the Parsian. He picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. A. How did she see this from here? So she pulled out her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, and during that time you claimed over the chain link fence. And then I boldly grabbed her arm. The chief prosecutor hung up the phone. And you saw her doing this? Hmm? What is it, Mr. Wright? Chief prosecutor made her escape. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I have to just point out what I just remembered. The fucking I already did the, the cell phone. It's this. It's this. I need to point out what she saw. Yeah. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is the former detective. The testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have guessed that you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. Mm. <sighs> Stop yelling. Ahem, let's look at the poor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, that's true. You couldn't have possibly seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What? Well, uh -huh. Order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Hmm... Definitely where she saw it, right? Because, like, those two things don't add up, so she must have... Yeah, she must have seen it from somewhere else. Probably the security office. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, we'd be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. But, said the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean that Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I've ever heard one. 
Before you could call my life pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard up until now points in one direction. The place from a star witness the crime was here. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security guard room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so she can, you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in a block. The only place she could have seen it, the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember, I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star, how many years have I been getting the better of men? I think the tables could have been turned. Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, does this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? Does it make sense? Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the wicked. Wait! If she was in the security guard office, how did she take this? Either this was not taken the day of the murder, or No, it just wasn't taken the day of the murder. There's no other explanation. It just wasn't taken the day of the murder. I keep calling her Angle. <laughs> that truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So, tell us what you, her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Uh, me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. The star witness the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. Must make a vital difference. What? What would change? Angle of view to the crime. Why the angle at which she saw the crime occur would change. The angle? What do you mean? Um. Well, the security station is on the second floor, and um, she would have. She would have sort of a more three D view of the crime, and this is important. Why? Um. <sighs> no. I want to point out the photograph. That's why I said different angle, different view. Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you saw from... I mean, distance the crime? Welcome back. Itchy, itchy. My eyeball is itchy. There we go. I guess this into the crime would be the best big difference because like lighting doesn't affect anything. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but look at this- uh, one look at the floor plan and it's quite clear. 
The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could have seen. What she saw is not questioned here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you missed it, Miss Sky? Well, witness, you... Yes? Oh, did the squid bills, right? The quality of my lunches has gone to load and elbow. I was bringing a PB&J with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Wow. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking and B block. That's quite a detour. And that's how she took the photo. I see. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there who, in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have the photocopy evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh oh. So right, you have to do something. But have I any evidence to stop this? Probably. Hopefully. Have to, right? Five minutes between the witness in the the witnessing of the crime and the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta with that in that amount of time. If you like it all dented. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer, you would run. This time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way, it's inconceivable. Yeah, yeah. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness is grudging against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next business witness ready to go? Unfortunately. I appear to have overestimated the wit this witness on account of her personal professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. But that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Hold it! Who? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? Squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have a decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Oh, triple decker. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. And like the lunch line motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Yeah, for real, when pull evidence out of your ass. I should have mentioned these five, those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, uh, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. The other, the blood type, matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. The shoe proves it. It's flawless and decisive evidence. 
What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive ne evidence needs. Witness, what is the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends and forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall not be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth's theory is celebrating. And not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh -huh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study more evidence law. Some evidence law. Really? Prosecution's complaint. Notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. That's it? Also, I'm gonna save because, like, I am running out of health. I'm gonna press on things until I think of something. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted the people to look at the results. The results? <sighs> I'm yawning so much I do apologize. Bum, bum. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. I got a piss. I will be right back. Anyway, we're gonna pop back over to here. We're gonna continue. I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very eyes. Compared to that, five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, rearranged testimonies, erasing evidence, and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This is when the suspect is admitting she did it? But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. And you found the shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained poo, she snuck off with the shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon, should, if should that happen. See this fashionable blanket basket I have here? It carries more than just lunch boxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. In any case... Itch, itch, itch. My eyeball is itchy. Mm. 
What? I don't want to yawn. Stop yawning. Eh. I don't want to be yawning. The yawning only makes me more tired. Stop it. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. So you brought it to the forensics department? If you're gonna submit something as evidence in court, you need it proved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensic expert. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And the blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman? As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. You can't say for sure this blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Oh, uh, well... Blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However... You can't tell from a blood test whether the murder was committed, committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types of blood with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more than estimate, more or less na narrow down an example of blood to just one person. Or so I hear. That, that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten a DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lala's guys. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was gonna say that. I can't let this evidence go without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Something like- some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Others like your client. She's in hot enough- uh, she's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or do you not have a problem with the shoe? Problem. They said in a previous line that it belonged to the victim, but that doesn't look like- That looks more like a traditionally a woman's shoe. I thought it was Lana's. This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Yeah, it says the victim's shoe. There is a problem. I'm not imagining things. I say there's one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're so young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What can contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with the evidence. Uh... This. The, the, the blood's better on the bottom. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, Ricky. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense, the victim was stabbed with a knife. What could it possibly be contradictory about the blood on the bottom of the shoe? There was no blood on the floor. 
The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the shoe, victim's shoe, is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found around the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. This picture only shows a part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that a lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think! Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? A witness is more devious than I give her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she still slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. Huh? What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. She prosecuted tried to resist, us, but her efforts were in vain. Ranger, can you not be doing that, bud? She knocked my hands aside and kicked over an oil drum. Ah. Oh, she's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I thought that was strange. A strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that. Hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor in the belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness. W well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. What? That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoe tie her quite clearly to the murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please! What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The, big, the verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecutor's side! She could have been lying about the water. This court finds a defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Little girl. What did you just say? Uh huh, me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well. I thought you had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox? A lunchbox called Evidence? But wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. The time for the deliberations is the past. Any further comments will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough of Queen. Look at this. Another fucking photo? The muffler. I 
had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Fair point. I didn't think it belonged to the victim. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait, look at the asphalt in this photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Raising the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help at all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case in the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not, don't be quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt, take another good look. Don't give up, not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! Your honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand out my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it'll be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over. Until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right? Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem with this photograph. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or a scarf in any, of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car or a motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as, uh, part of an exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm, so what is there something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this... It's important the case. You said as much as in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on, on his mind. Tell us why you think the muffler is related to this case. Miss Starr, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, uh, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler! Uh, yeah. Could it be that muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Uh. Well, it seems we will have to sp suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we have any further unanswered questions, if we leave any question unanswered here, we, we do a disservice to the law. Have the card the crime in the scene expected it. He expected it once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew, that was close. But we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry? Okay. Although... Stream has only been going for an hour and a half. I do think this is a decent spot to stop because it is in between things. I won't have to worry about not remembering what I was doing. Um... You know? And I'm still trying to adjust to the new schedule and whatnot. And I don't want to be yawning for the next, like, 20 minutes. But I think I made, we made good progress. We got through the first part of the trial. I have no idea how many parts there are, but we got through the first part. Which is good. Um. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so like three days, four days. Okay. Now for announcements. Uh. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, special thing. Special thing. Special surprise. I'm very hyped for tomorrow. Um. I'll be very excited. I'll be very ready. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be awake. Be very awake. I'll be very excited. I'll be very awake. Very excited. Um, very hyped. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Uh, I, I, I am still getting used to schedules and sleeping and whatnot. Um, So, yeah. I don't think I really have anything else to say. So, yeah. I might start starting this stream a little earlier. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Game Man discovers sleep for the first time. Yeah, I'm still getting used to this sleeping thing. Uh, but yeah. So, tomorrow's special thing. Tune in. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!